Uh, so I'm going to call to order the uh, March 22nd Conway Select Board here, uh, meeting, and it is six o'clock, and we're doing this again by Zoom, and if people want to watch it, they can tune in to our uh, FCAT video on demand channel, which is called FCAT Media. Go to YouTube and search for FCAT Media and you will see all our select board meetings and all the Deerfield, Sunderland and Waitley select board meetings and school board meetings and more than you wanna know. They're all great for putting you right to sleep. So uh, we start off with approval of minutes. Um, I had one correction on the minutes. I don't you figure you guys might've seen it too, but on page two, we were, we were talking about looking at the numbers for donation, uh, where to get the grants from. And in the minutes, it says and it's for us to vote on next Monday. And really what we said was we were gonna vote on them next Thursday. And we did, but, uh, uh, but we, we weren't planning on voting on them the next Monday. And it was in the agenda and all of that. But, but so we, and we, we, so if, so Louise, if we, you could just change that in the minutes from Monday to Thursday, about a third of the way down on page two. Okay, we got that, thank you. That was it for me. Um, I don't know of other issues anyone had. The, 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 in the old business, the very first sentence about um, the, the search committee, the, the way it's phrased, it sort of um, could, uh, uh, allows for the interpretation that the, that, uh, the committee met with Trisha Vincesi and uh, and Trisha decided that something should be so. I, if the words and the committee decided could, could be added right there, that would be more appropriate because that's kind of how it was. So, you, well, I, I, I'm on the search committee. Trisha Van Casey has not met with the search committee. Right. She talked to a couple of pe a couple of people. Right. So, but, it, but as far as the, the, the official meeting of the search committee, um, Trisha Van Casey has not been involved. Yeah. So, you know, she her name maybe might might be better off not being there at all. I don't, I don't know. It's just like a town resident, an interested town resident, Trisha Ventasi gave some feedback and the committee decided or whatever. So it's just, the committee makes their own decisions is, was sure. what I just thought it should be clear. Is that good, Tom? Um, can, can you uh, say what paragraph you're talking about? It's uh, old business. The very, it's sort of at the beginning of the, uh, Min, uh, uh, of the minutes. About halfway down on page one. Yeah, old business. Yes, I'm sorry. You got that? Yeah. What's, the, what's the problem? So it's the committee decided. Yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll make that change. If we have any more questions, we'll uh, consult you. Thanks. So meetings are attended by select board members. So first, don't you want to approve the minutes as amended? Oh, oh, oh yes, oh yes, oh yeah, right, good idea. So we want to approve the, the minutes as amended? I'll make that motion. Okay, well, I'll second it. We all are nodding. Uh -huh. um, some people have commented that we really should be doing roll call votes. And I know that, you know, when we go to other meetings like for Frontier Regional, they do it. So I'm, I'm gonna do a roll call and I'll say, Phil, Yes. And Erica. Yes. And I, Bob, say aye. So, and, and actually, I think it's okay if you guys are all nodding, I can say it's unanimous or something like that. So I think we could do it that way. And yeah. maybe we don't have to do it roll call. Um, yeah. Another way. When, and, and when the frontier meetings start getting longer, we do the everybody raise their hand if they approve. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and they, they, and then the, the person keeping score just runs through the list herself. And that's, that's the, that, that'll save like 30 seconds, but those add up after a while. I don't think we're going to have a lot more people uh, that yeah. have to vote. Oh, so back to meetings attended by select board members. None for me. Okay. There was, well, I mean, apart from the, um, the, uh, uh, <laughs> search committee for the new town administrator, but I, I mean, we were in executive Good. session for most of that. So I don't know that I can, I mean, things are progressing. We're definitely like, that's moving forward. Great. Um, but I don't know that I can technically like. Yeah, yeah, that counts, that counts. Okay, all right. 
Thursday. Next week. Thursday. Yeah. Oh, Thursday. right. And then Thursday was the um, was the Frontier School Committee meeting at which we approved um, the use of funds from the um, the trust funds, the Germain. There were two. Wait, right. There's two Germains, and then there was Howland. Happy, right. Um, so we approved the additional funds for um, the playground at the Conroe Grammar School for accessibility. So. So Erica, when you see Phil and I pulling out our calendars, now you know what we're doing that for. <laughs> I forgot, like, I, I, that's right, I did we, we always forget, sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. how about you, Phil? So uh, Wednesday the 17th was the Frontier Capital Committee, um, where we, um, we opened the bids for the track and uh, the, um, we approved the, the low bidder. Um, and that um, ended up to be a bid that came in a couple hundred thousand dollars lower. The, the low bids were a couple hundred thousand dollars lower than predicted. So that was, and, and actually it was within the original budgeted amount from two years ago. So that was really good news, I thought. And, uh, um, but of course that was a slightly, a, a glitch took place and now this, the, the uh, Frontier School Committee is meeting tomorrow to to reapprove that because the wording in the appro original approval wasn't mm. adequate. So, um, well, there is a promise Phil, of a can new. You... Yes, uh, I was just going to say, can you get us a copy of the uh, minutes that the school took for that meeting? Yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you. And, um, if you could send that to both Louise and me, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. And then Thursday was the uh, uh, Conway School Committee uh, joint hearing with the Select Board and the Finance Committee to to uh, to, to listen to their budget proposal um, and uh, fo following you know and follow following which the we had the Select Board meeting briefly to approve and then the School Committee then met for a while afterwards which. And they did approve the they did approve that budget and um, uh, yeah so that was that was Thursday that was it great um, so I was at the same two meetings too so I'll have my own comment about them but I thought it was great to hear that we, the same consultants the two consultants got hired to do both the track and the playground and they were you know they were gave a really excellent presentation on both of them. And I ended up almost thinking we're going to build a little track at Conway, you know, at the Conway Grammar School. Uh, uh, but at, at, it's a little nerve wracking to hire the low bidder, but they were actually, you know, one of their top choices for who they wanted to actually, you know, to work with. And they've worked with them a lot. And, and it, it, you know, I, I don't think there's a downside to choosing the low bid. And it was only, you know, Twenty thousand dollars less, or something, than the next bid, but it was hundreds of thousand dollars less than the two top bids. So that was that was really nice to see. But, uh, okay, but so we were all at both of those meetings. Um, public comments? Uh, no public. Old business. So we have a couple things. Uh, one of them, uh, one anyway, of the first one's going to be to sign the contract uh, with Mary Wigmore, who we all got to know pretty well during the the forest plan, and and she's been hired to create the the carb the carbon credit market feasibility study. Perfect. If there was twenty people bidding, I I would have hoped that she would have been the one, and. Um... The, the fact that she still bid under our budget, uh, under the budget for the thing was really impressive too. So um, yeah, take, couldn't, have, couldn't be happier. So I'm gonna make a motion that we sign that contract. Yeah, second. Yeah, I mean, and uh, and uh, it's, so it's unanimous. I can, I'll yes, say it's it unanimous. Is. Everyone's nodding their heads. Yes. Right, okay, great. So now we have something that I think may be the contentious issue of the night and, uh, you know, it's going to lead to some discussion. And I, I wanted to just talk about it a little bit before we get started, both for us and for anyone who's going to be listening. I didn't know if some of the people who are interested in this topic might be, uh, you know, joining in on the Zoom call tonight. Um, 
And mostly I think, I'm hoping that I think that this has gotten contentious due to some misunderstandings of our talking about it somewhat casually in our select board meeting. And, and, and so Tom brought this issue up because he thought something was worded badly in our bylaws. And we had a brief talk about it. Um, and, but slowly, I, I, you know, and my looking at it, I also think it got worded badly, but it also has to do with stuff that I admit I really did not understand that well. And it has to do with words like appointed and designated, or we might think of the word as recommended. Um, we use all of those words when we talk about committees and we talk about who's on what committees and what the role is of various groups in creating all of our committees that work real hard. And, um, and so, so what I think is true is that for most of our committees, the select board appoints people to that committee on the recommendation or designation by the chair who usually goes out and talks to people and says, we need someone on the you know, open space committee, or we need someone on the broadband committee, or we need somebody on the sports and rec committee. So we have a lot of committees and we, we do all kinds of things to recruit for them, but ultimately the select board gets recommendations that cause us to fill out appointment forms and we do those appointments. And there are a couple committees where that's not the process. And the two that we've been talking about, well, the one big one that we've been talking about is the Community Preservation Committee. And there are two committees that are explicitly in the bylaws so that they're not done in that standard process. And What's the other committee, Bob, besides pardon the me? What well, you said there's two committees. What's the other one besides the committee? The other one is the personnel okay. committee. Okay. So both of those are explicitly in the bylaws. So for example, the personnel committee has got one person who is appointed by the select board, one person who is appointed by the finance committee, and one point person who is appointed by, I'm not even gonna remember it right now. Uh, moderator. By the moderator, by the, by the town moderator. And, and so when those appointments get made, they don't come to the select board. That appointment, well, ours comes to the select board, but when the moderator makes an appointment and when the finance committee makes an appointment, that's an appointment, they're done. Now those appointments ultimately should get sent to the town clerk so that she can swear them in, but it has nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. And so, so, and that's to me what's important about the word appointment. And, and so when we look at the um, community preservation committee, the community preservation has two people that are appointed by the select board. And then it has a whole long list of about six other ways that people can get appointed from other committees. And those are appointments. In other words, when the council on the agent makes an appointment to the community preservation committee, it's their appointment. It, it doesn't come to us. We don't approve that appointment. Um, you know, we might say thank you very much, but, but and, and, and yet the word appointment is not used in the bylaw. And so that's what Tom was upset about is it says they designate it. And it's as if that designation goes to the select board and the select board makes the appointment. And that's not the case. And I think that misunderstanding is what caused some of those committees to feel like their appointment was being stolen from them. And I don't think that was, you know, that was not Tom's wish and, or, or our wish, as far as I could tell. I don't think that when we talked about the word designate and the word appointment, that that's what we meant. You know, that, that the council on the aging has their appointment and, and every, you know, um, there are other appointments that get made. Uh, the historical commission has an appointment. The Conservation Commission has an appointment. The Planning Board has an appointment. The, the Board of Park Commissioners and Rec 
And then it says, if they exist, they get their appointment. And if they don't exist, then maybe somebody else makes it. Um, the, if the housing authority exists, they have an appointment. Right. And all of those appointments are made by those committees. And have and nothing those appointments, to do with the ahead, board. All of those appointments are made by the individual committees and we don't review those appointments. That's so right. According to the bylaws, there's only two committees whose appointments that we approve. According to the bylaws. To now the bylaws. there is another committee and it's called the housing committee. And it was created at town meeting and argued about in town meeting. And it's not even mentioned in the bylaws, but it, it has its own method of doing appointments. But we don't have a housing committee anymore. So I, you know, I don't want that to complicate this issue, but there are these two committees, the personnel and the, and the uh, uh, community preservation committee that have this special way of doing appointments where they're not done by the select board. And, and are, my, are, we, are we conflating this in any way with the community preservation committee's desire to have a separate parks, like, like a subcommittee that we talked about in recent meetings? Or is that a completely separate issue? That was for the open space committee to have right. a have okay. a subcommittee, not not the community preservation committee. Okay, all right. Um, I, so so I'll say no. I, it, there again, you know, but a lot of the same language. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so um, what I think, you know, that Dusty King was upset about was he thought that we were trying to steal his appointment privilege or his appointment power or you know however you want to think of that which i don't think is the case i don't think that his, his letter didn't come across at all to me as as being upset or in any way uh, whatever i thought it was a well-reasoned uh you know the kind of letter that you want to get from your committees with concern i um i'm i i'm, I'm always okay with opinions that are kind of different that don't include name calling and insults and things like that. So I thought, I, so I, I don't know. I don't know. That, that's it. So I, I didn't get the anger thing or the upset thing from that. Well, I got a different, uh, I got a difference of opinion. Uh, I'm not that. saying anger, but in his letter, he said, giving the select board more control of the community preservation committee's membership, you know, wouldn't give the, uh, wouldn't be good for town support of that committee essentially. And, and I and I get I so I, I and I think I, I I got those arguments I I did I do kind of I don't know a bit of a distinction without a difference the, the whole thing to me because the, um, the 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 committees designating someone it always gets approved by the select board the only the I think that the overall there's there's other bylaws that it's the select board's responsibility to make sure. Like for instance, that nobody get appointed that does not live in the town of Conway, things like that. And so, so when you like look at these things, you think about like the long term. How, uh, so, and, and you have a committee that historically has a, has either high turnover or low, uh, low like a, a lot of unfilled posts. And I'll just say the Parks and Rec committee, it, it, and and that they for them to be like in a so you, you ten years from now you somebody that the, the person that has experience, resigns, the next person up is there for a month or two, and they appoint their uncle, whatever, from, you know, four towns away. Um, you know, kind of stuff like that is what, you know, and also the, the, the idea that, you know, within some committees, and I know that there's a past history of this in town, where there was a committee with two people on it um, that were neighbors, and then they had a, those neighbors developed a dispute, and which involved lawsuit and counter lawsuit, and they were using the, the committee was the so the it was good for the select board in that instance. I, I was told to sort of have a relief valve for that committee. The power of the appointment was used to settle things down. Um, and, and whereas that committee itself was stuck because of what was going on. So so I thought that there were like reasons to, to, to for, for Tom, like Tom's analysis. I, I don't know if you read that. It was I, I thought it was really pretty good. Um, and, and to make the select board the appointing committee, I think the, there's wisdom to that. I, the other thing about it, I do not agree the the, the CPA, the, Com the Community Preservation Act, is the most battle tested bylaw in town history. And that that was approved on floor meeting on town floor by two thirds vote over and over again. 
I think the wording, the first two tries was wrong and it had to come back. And it was approved by more than two thirds vote in the ballot box over and over again. And I, I know there's been a, a always has been a vocal opposition to it, but um, the votes at town meeting have been near unanimous for like 10 straight years. And I do not, I do not think the thing is in danger and is as fragile as, you know, I just, just, just from uh, no, that. I hope you're right. But, but, but in the bylaw, it says the Conservation Commission, um, you know, designates someone and the Historical Commission designates someone, whereas what they do is they appoint someone. And so we should, we should use that word appoint to make sure that that, that power is clear. I, I like Tom's su suggested changes. The, 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 he gave us two options. And I mean, I, I, I agree that it should be clarified. Okay. Um, and that was the first and, one. You, you like the first well, change. No, I like, I like the second one. Yeah. So, like, one so maybe, maybe you like the first, the like the first one. You like What's the that? first one. I like the second one. So maybe you should put both of them on the town meeting warrant and see which one people vote for. Town meeting is beginning to resemble a bylaw bonanza. Well, it is our local legislative body. Well, yep. what what that would do is is, you know, it, it it would it would allow the bylaw to be clarified at least one way or the other, and people need to know that it needs to be clarified because it was really sloppily written. I think. So what is the effective difference between using the word designate versus appoint? I mean, because to me, it's really just a matter of semantics, because I mean, couldn't a, a committee like designate or appoint someone, but ultimately the select board would be the one to, to say yes or no? And the select board might not appoint them. Right. And, and, and that would be option two. That's option two. Whereas if they are making the appointment and, and, you know, in the personnel committee, it's very clear that the finance committee has an appointment it's, and it uses the word appointment and the select board has an appointment and uh, uh, I forget again, but the other, another committee has an appointment. They make those appointments and that's where they end. And yeah, so in, in one of them, three words are used to describe that. So and and one of the words is a point. So um, that's, a, that's a mess. That's a mess. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm in favor of clarity and consistency. Um, I mean, honestly, I could go. I can see arguments on either side for the select board having the ultimate say and who gets to sit on town committees, and I can see the argument for the other side that we appoint certain people to be on committees, and then they have the responsibility to afford to appoint other representatives. Um, but I do think that for consistency and clarity, it's something that. I, so, that so there's a whole long list of these cross committee designations or appointments, but the sentence before that says the composition of this committee, the community preservation committee and the appointing authority and the term of office for each committee member shall be as follows. And then it says member of conservation commission, you know, designates or appoints, member of historical commission designates. And it uses the word designate, but it's already given each of those committees the appointing authority for each of those people. So, so if I can suggest something, th this is where, um, this is where the, the process of creating the warrant um, could be refined a little bit. One thing that we haven't done that I'd really like to get established before I go is that the select board takes a vote on each warrant article first to put it on the agenda and second, whether or not to recommend it. Because the select board might vote to put something on the agenda that it ultimately did not recommend, whether by two to one or three to zero. So you could put both of these on the warrant and then have that content debate um, about each one of them, and they may end up being split votes. 
but it, ultimately that would allow the town to decide. And we could put something on the warrant and take no recommendation, right? Make no recommendation. We could, we, we could, could. ambivalence, <laughs> have it on the warrant, but have the select board not, I mean. So Tom, well, you're proposing I, it, we put it, both it, of these that, on the warrant. Yeah. It, yes. But, I mean. And, and, and it, it's true that you can abstain from, from recommending. Um, but I think it is a, generally a good idea for people in, in any kind of committee or board to um, look at something and, and make a decision about it, because I think townspeople look to their, their committees and boards to do that. It's, it really is a pretty simple kind of thing. You know, do you want the committees to have the appointment or do you want the select board to have the appointment? Um, and, and, and I'm OK doing that, Tom. But I, if we spend more than five minutes explaining this to the group of assembled people at town meeting, we that's cruel and unusual punishment because I agree is, with that. This is this well, is a particularly boring. I think you said boring, it in. Yeah. You, you said it in, in one law. sentence right there. Yeah. It, it it just that, takes the one sentence you just used. Can we explain it in such a way that it doesn't take more than five minutes for people to argue yeah. about it? I think Phil did it in one sentence just now. Yeah. We must we must strive to keep people awake. <laughs> Okay, so so Tom, do you want to write up that warrant article, and we can take a look at it, and and you can use you you can use fill two sentences or whatever it was right there, and have that be the basis for the warrant article. It's going to be option one and option two, and one will be one warrant article, and the other will be the other warrant article. And 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 what you say is, if you want this, vote for this one. If you want the other one, vote for the other one. And so the two options are either the select board has the ultimate authority to appoint members to committee to town committees, or the committees themselves have the ability to appoint members without any. Well, the select board does have the authority to appoint almost all of the committees. They, but it's only the ones that are explicitly mentioned in the bylaws as being different. And we're only now talking about the Community Preservation Committee and right. its language in the bylaw. So, Tom, would you would you write the the warrant article to say that all town committees should basically follow the same protocol as the two that are actually written in the town bylaws? Uh, that uh, I I have not considered that. Um, that would go further than these, and, and these have been cut out in the past to be part of our bylaws. So we'd still have to say something like, unless otherwise specified in the bylaws, which would bring us back to where we are now. In general, the select board is the de facto appointing authority. Uh, is the de jure appointing authority? Actually, they they have the their they, that is one of their responsibilities for anyone who's not elected. Uh, hey, Alan, do you want to weigh in on this? <laughs> I hate to bother you. You got a minute? Well, you, you wouldn't so, appoint me to the finance committee. No, no, no. So what we're talking about, what we're talking about is who has the authority for you to appoint to the personnel committee? Well, right I, now in the I'm bylaws, the it says the, the finance the committee. Moderator. The town moderator does, Bob. He, he appoints one. That's no, no, idea. not to the finance committee. For the finance committee to appoint a person to the personnel committee. Oh, we did it in front Which would be... That's Steve Dinkelocker, who is here with us. Great. Yeah, he had the answers I asked Steve, and, and uh, the blessing was made, and that was it. He accepted. No, no. Or would you like? Would you be upset if we changed that to where you gave a recommendation to the select board, and they had control over that appointment? Okay, that would be a town meeting vote, Bob. You, yeah. I know, but I'm wondering. The select board can't do that. No, but I'm I'm asking an, a committee who would be involved as you know as an example of what would be changed if we made this change. 
There are no, there, you, you realize how many people have asked me that to serve on both the Select Personnel Committee and the Finance Committee together? And, and the, finger, I, 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 an index finger. Uh, I have to think about that, but um, I think it should go to a uh, town meeting. I'll tell you why, because um, the greater, greater issue is how our committees formed and, and chosen, you know, and to change things uh, like that where the select board has that ability. I mean, suppose they don't like any of their select board has issues with, with anyone on the finance committee, let alone the being uh, simultaneously serving on both. Uh, the, the finance committee is appointed by the moderator. Ex very it. explicitly. Yeah. Right. That's not the one we're talking in about. The in the bylaws. In the bylaws. In the bylaws. But the personnel committee. So is the personnel in committee. committee. In the finance committee, the personnel committee needs to have one liaison uh, from the finance committee on it. I think that's how it's written, right? Uh, you get to appoint one member of the of the personnel committee. Yeah. Um, may I suggest that this is outside of the scope of okay. our original? Okay, we just had the finance committee right here in front of us. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me think it over because you know sometimes yeah. you have the finance committee and the personnel committees. I think even as elected positions. And so I don't I don't think the select board really has a lot of say in it. Let me ask. That's fine. Let me ask. Okay. Okay. So let me let me try moving on. <laughs> now I have to find my agenda again. Moving on. In the meantime, we can all relax by watching the swaying palm trees in the background of Steve's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's Conway. I don't think I so. <laughs> St. Martin is 84 degrees. It's uh, wonderful. Uh, <laughs> so it's done. So if, if we had if we had resolved that that question, then we would we would be tabling the the third item on our agenda, which is to appoint Carolyn Thayer as a council of the aging representative to the community preservation committee, or can that or should that appointment be made by the Council of the Aging? Did they make that appointment and not us? So far, yes. So I say table it and move on. Yeah. So. OK. Because that's the way it's always been done. Is that good? Everybody Which is a re it, it's a reason for a lot of things. <laughs> Tom, how about an update on the interim town administrator position? Well, we got two new uh, applicants for the permanent position. I expect another application for the interim position by the deadline of uh, next Monday. So uh, it, it continues to develop. Great. Oh, and yes, I think I, yeah, I sent those on to the interim committee, the, the, the two permanent ones. Yeah, I saw those. Um, yeah. I'd like to propose that Tom send us a doodle poll or something for after the 29th, the week of the 29th, for us to start thinking about a date to do some interviews of the interim candidates that have been passed on by the screening committee. Do you, do you think, because after the 29th, Sure. We will. That that's the deadline for 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 getting applications, and we have two candidates now. Do Happy to do that. Have time to to, to 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 do any quick interviews of anyone that comes in right at the last minute for the interim position. Steve, do you think you'd you'd want to do that, or? As far as I know so far, the committee has two interim candidates and one good permanent candidate. It would start on July first. That's where we are, and we're waiting till March 29th for the close, and then we will do our final interviews with the. We set it up for April second, third. Third, I think Thursday of that week, we will set up for the final candidates to talk to. But we've already talked to a very good 
uh, person who could serve as the permanent candidate as well as the two persons for interim. So what I'm looking at is how soon can we start doing interviews on the interim candidates? We now have two. We, you know, if we could, and after the 29th, we will know whether we got any more or not. And we could schedule those two, two people to have an interview with the select board. It wouldn't be on Monday. It would be sometime during that week. You're fine. Debbie, okay, yeah. Uh, both of them are available. Yeah. Both of them want to get going. So I'm I'm gonna I'm asking Tom if he would send out a doodle poll or some way of proposing to us, you know, days other than Monday okay. of next week to do a Zoom interview with at least the two that we know of. If not, you may find someone you want to add add to that. Okay. That's fine with me. Great. Uh, new business. Um, it says approve participation in the uh, Maya uh, insurance for property liability and workers' compensation. Hmm. So we've had Maya right now. Yeah. Along. Um, I, I, I just want to, um, to clarify one thing. And that is uh, that that we did make progress on the um, on one thing that's not on here, which is the police and fired injured on duty. Uh, we do have something lined up uh, that will satisfy um, what we needed to satisfy on that, and um, and it will. Uh, we we don't know exactly what the final cost will be, but it will not be more than the agency we were working with under. Maya. So that is lined up and that is not part of this approval. So I thought I'd make that clear because uh, you may remember there were uh, there were issues about that. And I'm pleased to say that um, we were able to get uh, a deal and um, uh, through an through somebody other than Maya that will not cost us more. Again, we're not sure exactly how much it's going to cost us, um, but we're we're uh, we're in good shape. So we're holding off signing off for that until we until that one's really nailed down. But that one looks good. So so yeah. I'm gonna make a motion is, that we approve uh, going with Maya for property liability and workers' compensation for insurance. Yeah, but I, I didn't see a dollar amount. But we just know it's not going to be more, right? Tom will have to do the numbers. It, it, it should have been on the second page of the uh, of the Maya document I sent out on Thursday. Um, oh, yeah, overall, it's uh, 71619 So that was on the big spreadsheet? No, it's not broken down in the big spreadsheet. The The big spreadsheet inc includes the injured on duty, which is roughly 13,000. It would be a, a little more going through Maya's agent and a little less going through the other one. And that comes down to a, um, they're actually down 4.2% from last year for Conway. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. That'd be great. <laughs> You're on, Phil. What? Oh, well, you know, I, I know, I, I know in the past I've supported like going out to bid on this, or whatever, or seeing what the competition has. And I know that that's a, massively involved process to put in like applications in multiple places but um i always wonder we we you know we when you, we stick with the same carrier year after year after year and there is a thing about that they tell you not to do that 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 oh, that you're supposed to switch carriers but um i don't know uh, the 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 one thing that we didn't like about Maya's policy is that they they really discovery 
d encourage you not to have any firefighters or policemen that are over 70 and it gets very expensive and there are insurance yeah. carriers that have good rates I mean much better rates where we're not penalized if we have firemen over 70 or policemen over 70. Maybe next year we can look at kicking the tires to see what other carriers have for the whole kit and caboodle. So, so if I make a motion that we approve that, can I get a second and we can vote on it? I'll second yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So it's unanimous. Great. Um, and we want to reappoint Laura Nichols Shaw, uh, Julia Stone, and Malcolm Corse to the Historical Commission for a term ending June 30th, 2024. I, I think one of them anyway was supposed to be appointed last year and somehow that didn't happen. I'm not sure why. Um, so we're appointing them right now. Good. And they're, 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 they're in the group of committees that we appoint. <laughs> um, so it is our authority to appoint them. So, so we, I'll make that as a motion. I'll second. And second. We're all nodding, so that's unanimous. So, so now we can have our joint meeting with the Finance Committee. So, Hello. welcome Finance Committee. Uh, well, so, I just so, want to send my condolences to you on the loss of your wife. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Welcome. Yeah, it was. Uh, yes, Bob, I can't believe. Bob, hi. So sorry and shocked. Yeah, you. me too. Yeah. It was a it, it was a surprise. Um, she had just had her physical. She was in perfect health, and you, you know uh, what I think happened was she had something like a stroke, or a heart attack, or something while she was skiing down Berkshire East. Had nothing to do with Berkshire East. Right. Um, uh, it's a little comforting that I really believe she died instantly. Right. And and I can tell you I can't well I can't tell you how many times she said if I die while I'm skiing sometime, you know when I'm old. I'll, you said that? It's a great way to go. Yeah, oh, and I'll yeah. die happy. Awesome. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, yeah. Good, yeah, good, yeah. good. Okay. Well, well really sorry for, for that loss. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, me too. And then the, 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 all my neighbors in Conway, I, you know, I can't tell you how much food and, you know, sticky rolls and lasagnas yeah. and wonderful food uh, quiche people have been bringing over. Right. What about uh, matzo balls? You know, I haven't had those yet. <laughs> my, I have four kids here that are all home, and uh, and and we haven't had to cook anything. I can tell you, that's, that's uh, yeah, that's, that's good. That's really good. wonderful. That's Thank you. Welcome. So the first item we have is is uh, formalizing the uh, finance committee vote on the council on aging request for a transfer from the reserve fund for their foot care program. So the I can already we took, already took a vote, but if you want to hear it again, but it's unanimous. Uh, I mean, I didn't query Tom Donovan, who by the way is on this uh, phone call, but is unanimous in favor of doing so. I, I I think that was an email thing that went around, right? Well, yes. So you want me to do it again formally for the record here, since we're being recorded? Yes, that'd be great. Yeah, for for the uh, for the open meeting law. Uh, so uh, I hereby make a motion to approve the. Uh, the transfer of $1,500 from the reserve fund to the Council on Aging to pay for the uh, foot care nurse to uh, do the site visits for our, our town's elderly shut-ins. Uh, for those favor, I, I say aye. Roy and Rihanna, you're on the call. Oh, wait, wait yes. that broke up, Alan. Uh, do oh. we have a, did we have a second on that? All right, do you want to second it then? Well, I'll second it. I don't care. We second. Okay. Okay. Aye. <laughs> okay. All those in well, we, we need a yeah. We need a roll call vote. Thanks. All right. Well, uh, unless it is unanimous. Okay. Well, it is unanimous. Rihanna says uh, yes. Alan yes. Says, yes. Roy Cohn says yes. Steve Dinkelacker, Steve. you've already said yes. 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 And Tom yes. Dodd is actually on a computer right now, if you can believe it. <laughs> Way to go, Tom. Tom just said, well, hold on. I, I, he's in my house, but he's actually set up on a separate computer in another part of the house. And you're, I, don't, you're not unmuted. I think he just muted himself. We got unmuted, unmuted him. Hold on. Himself. 
What's... It's not coming on the computer. Yeah, Tom, do you want to vote aye by raising your hand? Hey, he's hands up, Alan. There we go. The motion carries unanimously. Five yes. votes. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so we, we do we uh Tom, do you want to talk about this uh the the, the five thousand dollar grant match? Yeah, I actually have three um three changes from the last version that, that I sent out. And these are all in the uh, the money articles on the upper right-hand side of the spreadsheet. Uh, the, the, that, the one that Bob just mentioned, we had, um, we spent um, $1,875 for a, uh, for a local match uh, for a FEMA grant to do our hazard mitigation plan. And we also have a 4775 deficit in the emergency management planning grant, uh, which which might still be reimbursed. But in case it's not, um, this article would uh, would go a long way towards replenishing the grant match account. Wouldn't quite cover all of that, but you know it's a good it's a good number to have. And um, just to keep things in there, this, this account was created so that if a grant comes up in the middle of the year that requires a uh, which some do, which requires a town match, and it, it, and it's not a huge amount. Um, that means we can go forward with applying for that grant, saying that yes, there is a town match for it, without having to call a special town meeting. So that's the purpose of the fund, and and those are the figures that we've paid out. And the five thousand would, you know, pretty much not quite, but pretty much uh, replenish those funds. So I added that as a money article which you can vote on later. Uh, also, the generator, uh, I'm sorry, it's, yeah, it's a generator for uh, the Conway Grammar School that um, has gone from 60,000 to 66,500. Now it's at $71,000. Uh, so I've, I've, I, I have that on, on, uh, on my own copy. That should be, uh, it's article six. Um, so it's no longer 66.5. Now it's 71,000, and the um, the amount to bring the Conway Grammar School Capital Stabilization Fund back to 250,000 is 34,000 um, dollars. So those numbers have changed. That leaves us with uh, a little over 37,000 dollars in free cash remaining, uh, which is not a lot, but it's some. Um, and if we don't get the uh, shelving system for the assessors, there, there's another twenty-one thousand dollars that'll be in that. So, Tom, so on that's, your three nineteen, uh, that's my spreadsheet. On your three nineteen spreadsheet, you had different numbers. Uh, is that not the latest one? Is, is right. I, I'm I'm giving you the the absolute latest figures as of today. Okay. Great. Thanks. And and saying that 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 those are changes that have come along, um, and I will get those out with the next version of the uh, spreadsheet. Great. Aside from, aside from that, um, the numbers are all good. The school numbers are all final, which is great. We, got, we just got the final uh, Franklin County Technical School numbers today, uh, and those work. Th those, are, those are what the draft numbers were. Uh, so um, it's, it's beginning to look like a budget. That, you know, we, we still have to recommend or not recommend the uh, the money articles, um, but it is balanced. We are well within our levy limit. We're doing real well on that. Uh, we had a bunch of extra new growth this year, so that so that's good. That that increases our levy limit, and uh, so it's looking like a really good budget. So a couple of months ago we had various committees come in and go over their budgets with us, police, fire, ambulance, highway, and building maintenance. And as far as I know, no one has raised any questions about any of those budgets yet. So might we be able to at least get started approving some of these budgets? Oh, now, now you're on your, yes, if you stand right in front of the little, that little 
all the top things. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to ask him how much free cash. I mean, yeah, asking right now. Alan, now I can't hear any of these people. Uh, hi, Al. You're on. Tom, did you have a question for Tom? Yeah, I, w I was wondering when he said um, the uh, new growth, what was the number? Let me bring that, that up. Tom? Uh, yes. We have uh, 80,688 in new growth. Thank you. And, and that, that's kind of uh, to the lower right of this on the spreadsheet. But, but before we de decide on any department's budget, do we not have to answer the question of 2% versus 2.5% versus whatever? Usually First. we do that way at the end after we look at all the numbers. So the, except for the fact that there were several departments this year that put in specific pay raise requests for specific individuals in their departmental budget, whereas all the other departments did not. Well, so I, I don't, I don't think any of these departments did that, did they? Well, the highway department did propose um, bringing the custodian under the highway budget and making it into a full-time position to be both custodian and part-time laborer. Right, but that, that had so nothing that, to that do is, with what the raise is that we give everyone in the town. Right, and, and, and you're right. That is something that we usually wait till the very end for. So yes, th this process is one in which we could ask those questions. Um, it would be helpful to know in advance so we could be sure to have the department heads here to uh, address any concerns that were made. I, I hadn't anticipated any questions and just wanted to get this process started. So, Alan, do you think your your committee would be willing to vote on these, or we could do it another week? But we, you know, we need to get started approving some of these. And you know, I have to admit, Tom likes putting them in the budget and making sure the numbers are right, and knowing that some some things are final. Good. We haven't met separately as a group just yet because this is like the this Conway Grammar School budget was just included within the past week. Which right, so we're not talking about that one. Right. Th these are the ones that people came in a couple months ago. Ken came in and Ron came in and Emma. Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, my thought is, you know, for the uh, certain departments, I'm thinking the uh, emergency services, we can certainly do. And the uh, treasurer's position, the, uh, I think those four, we want to do it now. I can't speak for all the committee members, but I'd be okay with it because you know they're nominal, they're nominal amount increases. If anything. Well, what, what we put on the agenda, and I don't want to do things that we didn't put on the agenda, were yeah. public works and public safety. Public works. Police, fire, ambulance. All right. And just as a point of process, does the um because I'm new here still. Yep. Um, does the select board generally wait until the finance committee makes a recommendation before the select board? makes a recommendation on a warrant article? No, it can happen anytime. Okay. We, we, we try to get consensus on, on all of the recommendations. Some of us have, have proven stubbornly resistant to that concept over the years. <laughs> We'd want nothing less. Well, well, Tom Hutchinson, do, do you want to put on the, uh, share the screen for those, those two department budgets? I just want to make sure because what I have is from uh, like back in January. That's right. And, and but nobody's raised any questions about them anyway. It, yeah, I mean, we have five different budgets, police, fire, ambulance, the f highway and the and then the new budget for the what we're terming the terminating building maintenance. <clears throat> Ron split that out.
Ariel. <clears throat> Alan, this is always the sheet that I remind Tom none of us have an 11 by 17 inch printer at home. I, I, I want to work. <clears throat> Even at that, it prints out at like a six point font. <laughs> <laughs> So down there in the bottom, you can see highway, salaries, roads, yes. ambulance, fire, right. police. So we're, lo we're voting on the 290 series 422, the highway and highway salary wages. Is that it? Yep. I mean, that includes- And 192. Thing. And 192, okay. 192 is building maintenance. Well, the 192 building maintenance, the- uh, Salary way to the building. Yes. Look, we're taking out 17.8 and adding it down. So it's a net increase of about $19,600. But it's putting it highway, in the highway department. Yeah, he's taking out from one and putting put in the other plus, right. I, I think. Awesome. Yes. Well, yeah, plus making wrong. it into the full time. 22 hour custodian. What buildings are they doing? They do all of them they, as, what are as necessary. So they, they do the town, town office. They're doing town office. Town office. Town hall? Yeah, and uh, and the highway garage when requested. <laughs> yeah, well, the highway garage that we've been using for years it hasn't seen a broom in fifty years. So come on about that. So I'm just saying. So it's twenty two hours to take care of the town hall and the town office. It sounds a lot. I mean, it's it's uh, just sounds like a lot, and then to roll it into the We're, this is this this job with the highway department. It's a laborer, it's, so it's it's not a CDL license. Doesn't look like any. No, it's license. not license. So I'm just kind no, of no. It's it's a it's a it's a lower I'm just level position. It looks, like, it looks like it could probably be more like thirty hours added to the highway department and ten to take care of the two buildings. What's it get done every day? I mean, that's like four hours, five days a week. I doubt that's the case. I sure it doesn't take that. Does, yeah, does that, and that, does and that in, Tom. Wait, does that include cleaning? Mm -hmm. So this this replaces Deb? Yeah, that's right. Deb, Deb is retiring in September. Right. So, how, so, so the what, point... The point of this is to turn that position. I, I agree that 22 hours is a lot of hours for cleaning the buildings that we have. I'm looking to hopefully have more help with other building maintenance thing, you know, items like painting and things like that, that the current person doesn't do. Um, just general maintenance of our buildings it's not just cleaning. Okay. It's, okay, so it's, it's, it's going to be more, more towards maintenance of the buildings, and then helping out the highway department for the rest of the time. Oh, well, that's that's uh, right. Okay. I have uh, to go back. I'm talking. I'm jogging my memory now, everyone. I, yeah. I, as I recall, because it's, it's been a while. Since. Committee. Yeah. As a personnel committee, recommend, made any recommendation on the convict? The thought was that the position at thirty-seven thousand four forty would that be able to hire a person with the requisite skill sets? That's and has the personnel committee had any thought? I thought they were going to meet further and and review the position, the remuneration, if it makes sense. Steve, do you know if there's been any, any there's been final that, vote on this position? I mean, I think a vote on that. On that. I, could you please repeat? I, I didn't hear well, Steve. There has been no meeting and no vote on this position. Oh. That I know of. Me from a but we did, did, But you did vote on the um, on the job description, correct? Yes. So that's what this was based off of, was the job description. I mean, that, that was done before 
before our meeting before. So, so Ron, in January. We, I'm sorry. So would you say like uh, a half to two thirds of that position would be the custodial slash cleaning and the other half or third is a, uh, like a helper around, you know, around yes. the highway department? Well, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm figuring it to be somewhere as like a 50, 50 position. Winter time will actually change the amount of hours um, just with snow removal, it'll, it'll make a big impact on the uh, highway department if we can have the person, you know, help out with snow plowing and, you know, the sidewalks and that kind of thing. So th this individual then would be operating some, some of the equipment? Some of the equipment, correct. Anything that doesn't require a hoister's license or a CDL. Okay, so so would you say... Uh, I, I mean, so what isn't getting done now that would be getting done with, uh, okay, so on the maintenance side, there'd be painting, um, whatever, just, just stuff general, general maintenance of the building, getting a storm um, I door mean, back on the uh, front door. Yeah, the that, that kind of thing. Exactly. Um, the current person basically does cleaning. Um Trying to get there's a lot of things that she's not capable of doing. Right. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, but I came into this and I had different ideas, but that didn't sound like that could work out with the person that we had. Yeah. Um, and how many hours a week does she is she working? Twenty two. Works twenty two hours. She does. Okay. For two yeah. buildings. Well. Okay. I mean, when the new building, the new highway building, that's going to add some hours to yeah. cleaning. Yeah. Um, and we're not, I mean, her, the position isn't to clean the um, shop bays and that kind of, that's not part of her cleaning duties anyway. So um, basically what she does up at the highway garage now is cleans the bathroom, what you can clean of that bathroom. Um every week but her main focus is the two other buildings right so i mean i has, guess that that's what she was hired for so she was like, specifically yeah so she has like four bathrooms to clean in total right one right. Uh, plus the highway yep. garage and a bunch of uh vacuuming i guess uh Correct. trash um and maybe some clearing or cleaning of desks uh if she can find a a, a clean, a clear horizontal <laughs> space. Uh, okay. Right. Yeah. And then she does snow removal for the walkways and uh -huh. okay. that kind of thing in the winter time. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not in a, I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to second guess it. I'm really not, but I have, uh, I'm sure that uh, you could find stuff on the highway side of things, you know, should an individual finish stuff in 18 hours or whatever, you know, or 15 hours. So, well, I, I know it would be a huge help to the highway department to yeah, have yeah. somebody, you know, with just normal um, labor skills. Yeah. R right now, okay. there's a lot of maintenance that's not getting done. Right. I, I mean, if you, anybody that approaches the town hall or the town office, you know, the door is in tough shape. I think the plexiglass sheet of, on the window is cracked. Um, uh, the door's you know, gone. Right. Things need painting. We need oh, a new yeah. sign. You're right, Bob, but that, that's, across, that's across the town. That's across the state. That's across the country. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is 50 years coming. You're right. Well, so here's a 22 hour position. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a benefited position that we only have to add a small number of hours to, to have somebody do it full time. And, uh, and to whose main job, in addition to cleaning is going to be doing that maintenance. What's the hourly rate? I've put it at $18 an hour. Okay. So is that the main stumbling block now about well, about Ron's budget? Did did we? 
somehow I don't recall us discussing this at length during the uh, the presentation. Maybe we did. I don't. I don't know. We did. We but did. We did. We, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't have problems with. It. You're talking about making a part-time position into a, a twenty-two hour a week position into a full-time position. It already, it already pays ben health benefits. The position. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's not going to increase any benefits. It's just the hourly wage. It's going to change. <laughs> And maybe let us get, uh, well, I can't, uh, you know, it'll be an interesting person that, that takes this. Or they, might be, they might be able to help out with the IT stuff if they got if they really do that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, if you got a couple extra hours, we'll, we'll yeah, take we, it. Yeah, we can bang on that budget. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, my thought is on this. So the personnel committee has recommended the position. I guess that the wage hasn't been discussed. I'm just at eighteen dollars an hour. I mean, uh, I don't know what you're going to find out there that you can do the things we want. I mean, uh, well, a good early yeah. worker right now gets started. It starts at at least twenty bucks an hour. I can tell you that right now. I'm working with a couple of contractors, and that's what they're offering. You know? Yeah. So what do you? Those, those aren't so necessarily here. benefited positions, Alan. Right, and this this is different than working for a contract. Yeah. And this this won't this work schedule is not as hard as uh, some some rascal is going to drive them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, you have, Steve Dinkelocker, do you have any uh, thoughts on this? As a, as a no, I was okay with this. I, I saw the change. I was okay. This it sounds fine. Eighteen dollars ought to get a decent people person. Okay, all right. How about you, Rihanna? Have you any thoughts on this? Um, I think if we need, I think it's a reasonable time, and also eighteen dollars is, I think, is good good for us. All right. So, do you, you want you want a formal motion for this, or what? Uh, what are you asking for here, everyone? Yeah, this is where we get the recommendations for uh, for the warrant. All right. You know, uh, what I'm thinking, and, everyone, and my finance committee members, is that we should probably have a separate meeting and go over a bunch of these things rather than do it piecemeal. You know? I mean, how much more agenda do we have tonight here to go over? You want to go over? Well, Alan, we can put these off to next week. We're just trying to get some of this out of the way. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're going to have a meeting and talk about it, that would be great. Well, everyone, you want to have, how about people having a meeting? Uh, you want to do a meeting, uh, people available like this Sunday, uh, mm. this Sunday at uh, two o'clock or something? <laughs> well, let, let, let me just point out that, um, that Ron is on this call. So if right. you have any questions about right. the highway budget, it would be best to ask them when Ron is available to answer them. I have no, I mean, otherwise the highway budget, I mean, that's it's pretty straightforward. It's just that position. Which, well, we spent a whole lot of time talking about this. I think I'm in favor of, of holding the vote, Alan. Okay. And, and just going ahead rather than having a separate meeting on this. Okay. We did talk right. about it at some length. Okay. So for the uh, highway salary wages, uh, the proposed, basically it's the proposed position included. I, uh, I make a motion to uh, to approve it as uh, as, as uh, presented. Anyone care to second that? I will. Second, second all right. All right. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 You have to aye. say your name. We have to. We have to uh, I have to tally it up for the uh, for the record here. Steve. Yes. All right. Uh, Roy. Aye. Yes. Right. Rihanna. Aye. Tom. Yep, yep. All right. And uh, Alan, I. And uh, if, if you could do police, fire, and ambulance, that would be great too, or just emergency services. <coughs> I so move. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right. So now we're on. What, what are we on right now? We just finished up. So it's unanimous for the highway. Police. The uh, the two hundred two hundred series. Two hundred series. Okay, so that would be. Uh, Please fire an ambulance. Please fire an ambulance. 
I move. Well, and, then, and the the dog and tree wardens, you know. Yeah. The 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 minor ones, EMD. Yeah, they're all good. Did a great job holding it together. All right. So we're talking about the two ten through uh, two nine two ninety series. Right. Okay. That whole section of the budget. You want a motion, Alan? I, yes, I make a motion that we approve the budget as presented for the uh, 190, 192s, 193, 210, 220, 231, uh, 423, four, four, both 423s, and 512. Well, and it was the 210 through 230. Or two, 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 well, you two, already two, voted on some of those, Alan. Yeah, right. 222 two, we voted on, 294, 22 we approved. Yeah. Yeah. Two ten through two ninety. Yeah, that's right. right. So we're right. doing two to two ninety. So two ninety in particular are four twenty three both and five twelve both. Huh? We're not doing five twelve yet. No. So four twenty three. Okay. So four twenty three. We already voted those. Yeah. No, four twenty two we voted on, not four twenty three. Four twenty two is a highway salary. Now we're looking at the winter roads and winter road wages. Oh, I think everyone assumed we voted for the highway department. Right. right. Okay. Well, in that case, we'll do uh, the 170 series through uh, through 423, just to confirm. I make a motion that we approve the budget as presented. And we care to second? I'll second. Second. Okay, Steve. All those in favor? Say what your number? name and you vote. Wait a um, minute now. What number are you doing now? 192. Yeah, 192 through uh, basically 231 and then 423, 512. Oh, stop there. Yeah, 290. All right, 290. 290 at 423. Stop at the winter roads and wages. Okay. Right, but the building maintenance we're not considering here because we, there's nothing to consider. Yes, it's public works. It's public works. Okay. Okay, so we're saying it's minus. But there, there's no salary in uh, right. building maintenance anymore. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Move. Yeah, it's been so, moved out into the uh, position. Okay, so let's right. vote. So, all those in favor? Aye. So that's you, Steve. Aye. aye. Rihanna? Yes. Aye. Uh, what? Yeah, aye. Uh, yes, aye. Steve? Yes. Uh, Tom? Yeah, aye. Aye. And Alan? Aye. Well, forgive me. I, Roy. Okay, Roy, I thought you already said I. All right, thank you, Roy. So we carries, the motion carries unanimously. Can we get a select board vote on uh, all those? Yeah, let's have a select board vote. So I'm going to make a motion that that we vote to support uh, 292 through uh, 192. 192, Bob. Uh, yeah, uh, 192 through 423. 423. Yep. We got it. And and we'll we'll do 193 next week. Oh yeah, no insurance. You're right. 192, 210, 220, 231, 290, 422s, 423. Those. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna make a motion that we we uh we uh Support that that we're going to put those in the budget. Or, yeah, yeah. So, did I hear a second? I'll second. Yeah. Erica seconds. Phil Phil nods. Hi, yeah. Eric is nodding. Yes. <laughs> Unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> so, Tom, did you want to talk more? You already talked about the money articles. We still have that here, but I think we finished that. Well, um, you know, it, if there are ones that people think are pretty much no brainers or you can recommend them now, uh, getting them done, getting any we can get done now would be great. Transfer was no brainer. To stabilization, number article five. I have to pull up the right. What was a no-brainer? Can you put the, the uh, treasurer? 
treasurer tax collector, I thought was a no brainer. Then you put it in so I, I, I'm talking about the money articles now, um, not the operating budget. We'll, we'll do all the uh, general government stuff next week. Okay. Hey, Tom, why don't you send out a list of the money articles rather than have us try to dig it out of the spreadsheet? It is hard to work with. Well, um, you know, you're talking like Tom, like article, uh, Tom Hutchinson, article three, article four, article six, article, those articles, correct? Yep. I have a question on Article uh, Six: The paving, the uh, debt service. Has there been any line item put into the budget to pay for the debt service for that, Tom Hutchison? Article Six? No. Uh, uh, Article Six is the generator for the Conway Grammar School, unless it gets. Oh, I have changed. an old one, so I have a Conway Grammar School generator. Is Article Three? All right. Okay, I've, I've got it up on the screen. If you can see that. I have a draft from March 17th. Yeah, this is March 22nd, Alan. Yeah, the, that just came out before. I, I didn't get a chance. Probably when I was coming home from work, it came up. And I didn't get a chance to come on the screen. So well, it, it, it should be on the screen now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay. Can you make it a little larger font, please? Is it possible? All right. There you go. The uh, 170,000 for paving that sec one mile section or one and a half mile section of, of that's of right, the, uh, Shelburne Falls Road. Yeah, it's Article Three now. Is that um, in the town operating budget for fiscal year 20? Does that include a line item for debt service? We're looking uh, no, we wouldn't. Year. We wouldn't pay the debt service until um, FY 23. We wouldn't start paying until FY 23. All right. Any idea of what that might be? What's being proposed as, as a range? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I do not have an estimate for that now. All right. It, it'd be fairly low because I'm I'm sure we'd just do state house notes. Well, I know the interest rate would be low, but we still have to pay back. I don't know how many years it would be like ten years, fifteen years. I mean. Uh, Pick, you get to pick your poison there. Back over a period of 20 years. You get yeah, to pick well, your poison there. Yeah. And if the state house note sale program, could we, uh, every year, taking the notes come up, we could take this debt service and mix it in with a town garage and have one figure, right? Uh, that's a Jan question. I'm hoping she'll be on next week. Yeah, I know. Right. Typically, I don't think she likes to do that necessarily, but yeah. just with the low, I mean, I think the interest rate we got or we're paying on right now, the Greenfield Cooperative Bank is like uh, two percent. It's only ridiculous to our number. That would be. We're not going to get a two percent rate. I don't think. No, so. who knows? Yeah. Rates have come down, but whatever. I, I'm looking over here at all the different items on. Uh, I mean, like the OPEB commission contribution, I mean, that's something that's a no brainer. We've done 20 grand. Uh, yep. The frontier capital expense, you know, I, don't, you have, we don't, I think we have no choice but to go along given our, our uh, minority uh, percentage portion of the budget. We haven't, we haven't much sway in that. That would be article uh, 15. Yeah. And uh, the assessor's recertification of 5,000. Know, yeah. I don't think you have much of a choice. So I'd go for articles 17, uh, 15, and uh, 12. 15, 16, and 17? Uh, no, it would be, uh, yeah, 15, 16. Uh, you can do 17 too, the grant cash match in article 12. So 12, 15, 16, 17. Uh, <clears throat> 18 says a prior year's expense. All right. Well, if that's something you already incurred, then all right. Then uh, that's a good point, too. So bring it down. Uh, uh, can you lower 19, the 19 is the library. 19. 20 is the prior year expense. So it looks like uh, 18 and 20, we owe money anyways. Might as well yeah. vote to pay it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> all right. Uh, 
At 19, the so library. 12 and, so the, the library is also not really optional because that, that jeopardizes the state funding if you don't do that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Tom, why aren't we paying Baker, you know, with it just a transfer? Why do we have to? He's still waiting for that to get those uh, invoices paid, Baker office. That's why they're on the warrant. No, I know, but how come we, why are we bothering? Why don't we just pay him, you know, through a, tra you know, a transfer of funds? Oh, we got to approve the whole idea. It takes, it, it takes a nine-tenths town meeting vote to pay a bill from a prior uh, fiscal year. Uh, and, and just so everybody knows, this was due to um, their emails going into our spam folder. So uh, we didn't get the last few months of uh, the last fiscal year. We fixed that now. So, Tom, the lowest I can see is 18. Could you slide that up a little bit? <coughs> 19 and 20. We haven't seen that yeah, thanks. And then what's 21? Tom, what's 21? Board of Health. That's something like a prior year, Bill. Vote on that one. Yeah, but $570. They were short for their uh, stipend last year for some reason. Okay. So I'm looking at articles 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. 15 through 21, yeah, and 12. Yep. I mean, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm in favor of uh, offering up a vote. Uh, how about my fellow finance committee members? Any, uh, Tom, Roy, Rihanna, Steve. Fine, your Fine. <laughs> Fine with me. Okay, These are we'll, all straightforward. These are we'll, straight do, forward. we'll do a package deal vote. How about I uh, make a motion that we approve as presented Articles 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 as presented. Anyone second, second that motion? Yeah. Second. Wait, did you have 16 in there? Yep. Yes. Yes. That's right. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 That's Roy, Tom, Steve. Yeah. Yes. 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 And Alan says yes. So we uh, motion carries unanimously. So for the select board, can we do that same motion and get a vote? Sure. So I, I I'll take that as a second from Erica, and I vote aye. So now, I just when Phil's not talking, I can't see his head. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, good. Thank you, Phil. Yes, yes. <laughs> you just you weren't on my screen, so ah. thank you. That's a good start. Almost painless. Yeah. Yeah. We have a low hanging fruit out of the way now for the fun stuff. Right. Painless so, till you write your write your check out to the town. <laughs> That's not painless. So, so those, that's all, Alan, that's all we had on the agenda. Okay. Well, I have a question. So for next uh, Monday evening, um, Tom Hutchison, what, what uh, article, what, what, what's, what's next? What else would you like for us to decision? Because I'm contemplating a, a separate finance committee meeting. It might be a good idea. Um, well, I'd like to do um, the rest of... Um, the general government and human services. I basically like to do the rest of Article Two, um, as, as much as possible. I mean, you know, um, at least one fourteen through one ninety. Okay. I mean, how about we just? I mean, I, I'm looking. I'm eyeballing it right now, and I see. Uh, Nothing here that's uh, jumping out at me. So I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm just here. Of my, my thought of mind being that uh, finance committee. Do you want to have a? I'm open to it. Having a, a interim room meeting to discuss uh, the 114 series and the uh, and the 190 would be a, the one. I guess it would be a fly 40 series. I got a. Tom, can you bring it up on the screen, or do I do I drift away here? Oh. Look to find the spreadsheet. So which are we talking again? We're talking 114 right through 161. Yeah. Actually, 162, three. I'm sorry. Okay. And then uh, the 540 series, 630 through 900. Mm. Okay. Let's see. 
Rihanna and Steve and Tom, you want to look it over as well. I mean, I don't. Yeah, everything looks pretty. Yeah. Pretty within line. What's uh, I we're looking at the top, right? That's correct. The top, uh, like twenty, uh, not top twenty line items, basically from moderator down through the uh, registrars and election. So the the select board, they someone bumped their numbers up. Yes, um, for some time the the select board has occasionally wanted to do things and they have taken it out of the town administration budget. Um, and I thought it would be good to give them a little bit of their uh, own money to do things. For instance, if uh, they wanted to do an appraisal of a property that was for sale to see whether or not the town might be interested in buying it, um, that, that's really a, a, a select board decision and, and should be in the select board budget. So that reflects the, the, uh, the well, first, restoring their stipends, um, because um, the stipend figure from last year was artificially lowered uh, because everybody was afraid of the revenue deficit. Uh, and then secondly, adding on sufficient funds to do the appraisal for a property as an example of something that they might want to decide to spend money on. So oh, yeah. are, we, are we proposing keeping a stipend at eighteen hundred dollars per select board position? Is that that group that's yep. what this? And then so you're asking for fifty six hundred dollars of um, operating budget money as on a discretionary basis. Is that is that it? So the sixty five hundred is oh, fifty six. Yeah, the increase of fifty six hundred. Basically, we're asking for. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Well, it, it, it looks like you, you're just increasing the stipend, or is it a split thing? Oh, so the, the stipends are going back to their original number, all right. and then an increase is for spending that they might want to do, so it doesn't come out of some other budget. So it's like a three thousand dollar miscellaneous. Don't affect it. Don't affect it's because uh, fifty fifty uh, four hundred is the, uh, the three stipends in aggregate. Right. And another, uh, you're asking for sure. 8,500. 3,100. 3,100 additionally, yeah. essentially, is that it? Yeah, I, I think. So, so there's also dues and travel in the select board budget. They pay the uh, Mass Municipal Association dues, yeah. um, for example. Okay. I mean, that's, uh, that's a few hundred bucks right there, and travel can be easily another several hundred dollars, 3,100. All right, I just want an explanation on that. Because uh, the way it's presented now, it's looked like the select board members are voting themselves a fifty-six hundred dollar raise. Which, yeah. uh, <laughs> no, but that's a good idea, Alan. <laughs> well, then you don't take a public vote. I mean, this is not like uh, New Jersey or something where town council people vote themselves raises without public notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you for explaining that, Tom. I. I so uh, again, back finance committee members, do you want to have a meeting between now and, and next Monday? Because I need to post it for open meeting law and. Tom has to schedule a Zoom meeting. Um, I'm going to tell you, Alan, when you, your suggestion two o'clock on Sunday, I could kind of hear the silence. That was, That's not a good time. That's one of like a lot alone. So how about this? Uh, you want to do the, this Thursday? So wait, what, which, which, uh, which numbers are controversial? Controversial. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm just asking. I, to me, none. I mean, uh, okay. I, don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be the, uh, the bully in the playground here. I mean, everyone else, please weigh in. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, um, 150, 159, account 159. And if we do this, fiscal year 020, 021, 022, it will have gone up uh, a third. Go from near 30,000, 020, and it'll be 40,000 in 022. Well, you I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just looking for an explanation for that rascal. The explanation is that costs go up in this in this area, not uh, and not necessarily uh, human costs. There's licensing, subscriptions, communications, um, and they only go in one direction. Those those don't go down. And uh, I, I mean, it's it, I've detailed it in other meetings. 
and uh, I, I, you know, I'll recuse, it, I'll, re I'll recuse myself from that vote gladly. I, it doesn't. Well, you should anyways. Well, right. Okay. But um, that's the long and short of it. You know, people need uh, people need Roy, greater Roy, greater Roy, internet is the details, speed. Is the details on the, on paper? Uh, the I can get them for you. Yeah, the details are in the um, they're in the uh, text of the report. If I'm not mistaken, am I correct, Tom? It will be in your budget. Well, it's the budget's basically four lines. It's not a it's no, not no, a no. The rocket. budget earlier in the season. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the one we're talking about. It's just yeah, four okay. lines. But. So, Roy, it went up $5,000 from 20 to 21, almost. Uh, 30, well, you're talking about 31, no, 31.55 from, uh, yeah, well, look, uh, we went, I don't remember what the year was, we went from MBI to Comcast to get greater speed in the buildings. Um, uh, we have... Um, just a variety of other costs. Uh, the Office, uh, Microsoft 360 subscriptions. There's always, we're always bringing more of them online for ma for mailboxes. Um, it 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 all adds up. Uh, there's uh, um, Sentinel One. There are these um, these very very good um, anti malware, uh, anti phishing products. Uh, just an assortment of of things. I mean. It's, uh, I don't expect, you know, it, it, I can explode those four lines if people want. I mean, we can put this aside and meet uh, finance committee if you want. And, uh, you know, I can detail it to you further. Well, I was just wondering, Roy, you know, so like I say, 2020, it's almost 30 thou. We do this increase, then it's forty thou or more. No, no. Well, where, where where are you at forty? Well, okay, we're at thirty-seven five eight six. Well, if Comcast goes up, which they they never go down, they always go up. That will increase. Um, I, I I don't know how else. You know, Comcast is roughly. Uh, well, I rather than talking rough numbers, I'd rather have the exact numbers. Yeah, it sounds good. Sounds good. In front of you, so I don't have them in front. Tonight, because and I'm uh, not trying to dispute yeah. this stuff, Roy. It's, I'm yeah. just trying to understand it. Yeah. Well, there's there's basically. Oh, here's another big one. Uh, remote work from home um, sucks sucks up a lot of resource. To be honest, just uh, trying to help people out when they. Um, but it's 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 no greater than. In other words, the the part that that I see as the consultant really has not increased. Um, but all the other parts have, <laughs> let's put it that way. Oh, there we go. No. So well, can, no. you should see the new, uh, you should see that budget up now. Right. Okay. Okay. So take a look at the, thank you, Tom. Software and subscriptions. That's a hefty increase. Yeah. Uh, professional technical. That's a decrease. Equipment and supplies the same. So, um, yeah. I mean that. So if we look at the prior year, all right, the professional and technical went from seven to ninety-eight fifty-five. Software and subscriptions still were increasing. Equipment and supplies, okay. Uh, yeah. Roy, how come the maintenance thing went away to zero? Oh, it didn't. It just got folded into the uh, into the professional and technical. That's that's all. Sometimes uh, so it's too, sometimes that, it's too, oh, here's why, a, yeah here's a, here's another big one well you know the website uh, the website doesn't run by itself it takes uh, it takes um, human maintenance it takes uh, licensing for the various parts of it even though I think we we what we're doing with that website we're paying a very rock bottom price to be honest. Um, uh, especially when you compare it to things like um, some of the commercial product that's that's out there for municipalities, um, and even though it, we it is a commercial product, we do pay for for commercial product for the uh, for the theme template and the various you can lose for three hundred bucks. Anyway, have I? Uh, are we any are we any better at understanding this? 
I can detail the software and subscriptions if you like. No, no. Roy, no if we get, you know, if, if we as a committee can get all these questions answered, you guys wouldn't have to meet in the middle of the week. Well, that'd be good. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. Okay, so you got to hang on while I do. No, no, no. Right. You're doing great. No, no. Oh. Uh, this is yeah, what no, I, I, know. For me, this is enough. This this explanations was enough. Yeah. No, okay. I have another registrars and elections. Uh, Tom Hutchinson, sixty-two hundred dollar increase. Is that for uh, additional clerical support, or is it for actually the actual cost of mailing ballots and all that? Uh, well, let me uh, let me bring that up. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, the, the detail was there. <laughs> Unfunded mandate is what it is. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Well, it wasn't the registrars. That's back in IT. Uh, it's yeah, IT. IT. Let me uh, yes, open uh, up elections here. Bill, while you're opening that, I do want to mention uh, another, uh, you see this backup and offsite data storage. That's, uh, that's a considerable expense. And that's because we have, we do maintain um, uh, fairly sophisticated backups of things off-site. And I'm not just talking about uh, files and folders. I'm talking about the ability to bring, uh, bring certain machines up and running in the cloud if, for example, the first floor of the town, uh, the town offices got destroyed. Uh, we would be able to get back online in a pretty, you know, three hours time, something like that. <laughs> So it looks like software and, and uh, destroyed. elections. So, elections. so Tom, you asked about elect uh, registrars and elections. There's a sixty-two dollar increase. Yeah, they're 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 paying their uh, their election workers um, properly now. The right. uh, Lori Lucier is is uh, giving a raise. So they, they earn well below minimum wage. How, how much are they going to make an hour now? Seven dollars an hour. They might get up to that seven fifty. They might get up to the federal minimum wage. Um, just so everyone knows, municipalities are not bound by the state minimum wage law, and the the way that that um, that uh, Jenny used to do it was she she'd have people come in for the entirety of the election in case they were needed, but they'd work an hour and they'd have an hour off. They'd work an hour, they'd have an hour off. So so really, um, they were only working half the time that they were being paid. So everybody felt that was a pretty good system. Um, Lori, I think, is, is gonna be a little tighter in how she manages things and she's gonna pay people a little more. Okay. But you're still anticipating having to pay an additional $6,200 uh, so 2020, so from, how many elections do we have? Is, we only have two elections coming up after the time we have town meeting and, uh, I mean, town elections in, in uh, June 10th. Uh, then we have, uh, we have one other uh, election, right? For midterm elections coming yeah. up. Yeah. Non-federal non elections. Yeah. Then we have a non-federal, they have one federal election, I think, coming up in 22, not only for, Cong for House of Representatives, I think, actually. No, 22. Next yeah, year. year goes into 20. Actually, you're right, right. It ends. It ends June 30th, 22. So we missed that. I'm just, I'm just thinking. And she's going to get a, uh, a ballot scanning machine. That's the new equipment. Oh, uh, all right. So that's because I figured it was, next year is kind of a late year for elections. This, this past year it wasn't, of course. All right. So how much is the ballot scanning machine? We talked about that. I think it's. Well, uh, she's got six thousand in this in the budget. That that's why the budget's going up by sixty-two. That's why it's going up by sixty-two. That's why it's yeah. going up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah All right. Up. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So uh, that ballot scanning machine—that's uh, you can argue that should be a, a warrant, a warrant for itself because it's five. It's, it's above five thousand. Yeah, we are just getting used to this new system. Sorry. Oh no, no, she figured it out. She figured it out. It actually comes in under five thousand because the extra thousand is all in warranties and training. Ah. So the capital expense is less than $5,000. So 
Well, how much is it then with pouring the warranty? Which we I, I consider purchase of equipment to include installation and training. So is it including installation and training? Then it comes in probably at right around five thousand, right? That was her justification. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, there's a thousand dollars there, right? For programming the auto mark. The, the only thing about this budget, my question about the salary items was that when you look at the history of it, they've never really come close to expending what the budgeted item was. And that, uh, especially when you look at last year, which was of course the presidential election from hell. And you know, you can't, you can't imagine them spending that much this year in a non-federal, non-presidential, non-congressional, whatever. And um, I, it just seems like that, I understand having a little uh, room for margin of safety, but it seems like it's a little high, doesn't it? No. No. No? no. Okay. Not to me. <laughs> what we were talking about in terms of wages is an increase of about uh, $1,200. That's it. Yeah. yeah, so the election, the, we're talking 162, 163, right? That's correct. And the increase, yeah, and the it sounds like the increase. The increase is, is all in one sixty three. Okay. It, yeah, and and it sounds and, like and most I misspoke. of the increase, most of the increase is this new piece of equipment. Right. Right. Yes, right. I, I misspoke about the um, the uh, election workers because I I see that is level funded. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good. I, oh, starting a rumor. All right. <laughs> all right. But I did not misspeak about Mass the, the municipalities not having to pay minimum wage. It's kind of an oddity, but it's oh. true. Yeah, either, either there's agriculture or yeah. schools. Yeah. All right. All right. So I don't I don't see any discussion. So uh, finance committee members, anything else on the uh, on the uh, 114 through 162 three, and then in the 540 series uh, 630 through. Through 900, I see nothing that's uh, that would warrant having a separate meeting. But I don't want to uh, please weigh in here. I don't, I don't want to speak for everyone. Well, I, I think we went over this at some length and talked about it. But yeah, all right. I just want I just want to I just want to bring something up that we got an email last week. I think I forwarded it. Everyone should know about it in this call that uh, new growth in the, for next year at this point preliminarily is estimated at 80,500. And we're proposing a total increase in spending of 174, 720. So we're talking, I don't know what that means in terms of reval or anything, but our living appropriate base is going up to uh, like 250, 272, it's going up to like 268.5 million or something. I have numbers written down. Somewhere. In other words, uh, we're going to be raising property taxes by like about a buck a thousand at this point, right? Tom Hudson, it looks at according to uh, Lee Whitcomb's uh, initial workup. Tom, do you have enough data to, to, to comment on that? I'm just looking at the big picture scope of things. When we go to town meeting, I mean, I'm sure people are going to be, because uh, keep in mind, we're changing how things are done this year. So people will have the new property tax bill coming to them in hand by, by the time they make it to town meeting on June 5th. Yeah, I have it. That, yeah, uh, I have it going up twenty-four cents. Just twenty-four cents. So, so with the bill that's coming out, uh, then we're, we're, we, uh, I, I'm having problems with figuring out what Lee sent. I have it at nineteen seventy-four, or is it? Uh, I thought we were at seventeen ninety-three. Is it eighteen forty thousand right now? What's our current uh, assessed rate there, Tom? Hutchison? Is it eighteen forty or seventeen ninety-three? I think it's 1876. 1876. Yeah. That includes so 1876. So it sounds right. If we're increasing the 174 and we're having new growth of 80, so the difference is uh, about uh, 90,000. We're talking that equates roughly to. Uh, no, is it, Alan, Alan, the, the, the new growth is FY21 new growth. Okay. Right? So, and, and we're not going to know, we're not going to know our equalized value for FY22. We're, we're not going to be able to set the tax rate uh, usually until September of 
the fiscal year. So we don't even know the figures. Um, it's all very much an estimate. I just want to make that clear. Thank you. Okay. Even, I mean, Lee, uh, I, is there a meeting later this week or next week? Uh, I thought she was going to be able to set the tax rate. Yes, um, uh, we're, well, we're lo very much uh, looking uh, forward to set, setting the tax rate. Um, the meeting is going to be a, a tax classification oh, okay. meeting. Uh, yeah, okay. And plus, it's, you can't finalize until this budget is passed anyways, right? For, what uh, we're setting is the tax rate for FY21, yeah. which is usually yeah. done in the fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been yeah, delayed yeah, this year right. because of the pandemic. Right, 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 right. So uh, the April, the tax bill she's talking about is the second one from the year we're in. That's that's all in, in her email. Yes. Yeah, I got it. Sorry. Thank you. Right. Okay, but so the way, the way, uh, so you've got FY 2021 tax rate estimate, 1895. Why does it say estimate there, Tom? Uh, yeah, sorry, that that should be a uh, 22. Oh. Ah, ah, okay, all right, okay. that's what threw me. Okay, okay. well, if if these numbers yeah, hold, but if these numbers. But again, this is based on FY21 right. taxable value. Right, right, right. right. So, so the taxable value will be different next year. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. Right. So. Is there a reval that's going to happen during fiscal year 22? I think there is, right? There are estimated revaluations every year. According to Lee's spreadsheet, the taxable base right now is 285.2 million approximately. Right. And, and didn't we move to a, a an every five year thing, or are we still on the every three year? It's every five years, right? So I think yeah. Uh, yeah, the, I state, think the state tells the towns when they got a how often a reval. And then a while ago, the state said the properties are going so much up so quickly. Start doing a reval halfway in between. Can you find out from Lee? I, I thought I read somewhere that during fiscal year 22 that the town is going to get to do a five year reval. I think it is. So, so that will be a certification and it will let us know how close our estimates have been over the last four years. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm just looking at, uh, you know, having to raise the rates, the rebound goes up, you know, necessarily we don't raise the rate, but obviously our taxable base would go up from 285.2 million to potentially, I don't know, 300 million or something. Who knows? That's only a few. Uh, probably not that much. All right. It's very rare for it to go up more than 3 million. Okay. All right. And the problem with that is that when it does go up, it's usually based on utility investments and their personal property tax. Yeah, we had a nice pop um, a couple of years ago from Comcast. I know that was like 110,000. That was a surprise. That was when Comcast so those, out the rest of the town. Yeah, yep. Remember that? And that, so so the, that's, the that's a kind of a, bo a boom and bust um, yeah. uh, system. And, and it, it's it's really best to count on very little um, rise in equalized valuation. Again, in the last eight years, it's gone down at least twice. Right. All right. <clears throat> but th this year, right now, this moment in time, is if she's if she's the properties, she's well. I, the, the market value of all properties is is somewhat inflated right now. Yeah, I mean, nationally, I just saw the figure: three hundred and fifteen thousand is the median price of a uh, of a home now. Roy, that sounds more. That sounds more than somewhat inflated. Well, that's what it is, and that no, includes, I believe you. Yeah, I'm just I mean, commenting. It, well, they said sounds... me, this is median, and I don't think it was new homes. This was just of sales. In other words. When, yeah. they look, when they look nationwide at sales, 
this is what's happened because the inventory of homes has gone down 30% because nobody puts their house up for sale because they don't think they can buy a house. <laughs> well, they also, there hasn't been any push on affordable housing since the, in this state since well, the 80s. Uh, right. But that, you know, that said, so what I'm trying to say is that our, again, if you, if our assessors are typically supposed to be the market value of the uh, property. Right. That's and, law. You know, so I, I don't know what that's going to do. Well, it'll bring, it doesn't matter. The, the, it'll, it'll raise bring, the valuations and it'll and, lower and it'll, the tax it'll rate. It'll lower the tax rate. Right. So that's why tax rate is yeah. never that clear to, you know, you, know, you could track a trend maybe. But, but Roy, there are many, many towns in Massachusetts. You can't buy a house for that. Of course. Yeah. Of course. <clears throat> I, you know, of, of course. So, no, I think I was on that uh, track of, uh, because when you look at the tax rate, you say, oh, uh, you know, it's only uh, going up 26 cents, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Obviously, yes, you know. All right. Well, we've covered everything. We've done nothing. Thanks. <laughs> Great. So, no, Alan, I, I think it's worthwhile if you, you know, you can ask Tom or you can, you know, ask, right. well, Roy, Roy, who's here anyway, you know about these budgets so you don't have to have a meeting or you'll at least have the data you need all right so um, i thought this has been a great discussion and even the very end part because uh, my thought of so riano roy steve tom donovan do you uh you want to meet in the interim i mean i have to know because with open meeting laws i need at least 24 hours notice so if you want to do it thursday yeah. friday uh, any 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 I'll assume the answer is no until somebody yeah. tells me yes, they'd rather I, have you know. I, I'm not, I don't have a burning fire to meet. <laughs> How about you, Tom Donovan or, or Rihanna or Steve? Well, uh, I am okay <laughs> with Thursday. Okay, uh, How about you? so you want to meet? You'd rather meet? Okay. How about you, no. uh, Tom? Uh, article two, it, you know, I could do the vote tonight on that. The, the money articles, I'd want to look at it a little bit. Yeah, we're not, okay. not going to cover the money articles next Monday. I agree. The, yeah. we, the other articles that we have to have, the money articles. Out of the but it, look, it looks like yeah. Article 2 could vote now. But All right. I mean, you know, the way we broke it up, uh, maybe not the schools, but I don't know. Yeah, no. Well, they wouldn't do that because at that school, Conway Grammar School budget, I think they only had their preliminary presentation last week. Uh, no, it's official. It's voted. Oh, it is voted in. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, my thought is then uh, we can meet. Uh, let's meet next Monday. I mean, uh, how about you, Steve Tinklocker? Do you do you want to meet? Uh, let's meet next Monday. Great. Okay. okay. All right. And again, we're to, we're meeting next Monday just on department uh, numbers one fourteen through one sixty two three, and the five forty series six thirty through nine hundred. The other money articles, and then maybe next Monday, what we can do is pick. Pick a time that the finance committee can independently meet and we can hash out the uh, other money articles. And if there's another draft of the uh, order article numbers, the, the, different, the numbers change. Tom, no, Tom uh, Hutchinson, if you could uh, send them out. So we're all, we're all looking at the same thing. <coughs> sure. Um, what time were you going to meet on Monday? Well, we're going to meet jointly with the select board. I mean, I, I think yeah, it's all, but, uh, there's no need to have Oh, it. OK. Just that's for Article I Three thought, I, budget, not the not, not the other one. Hmm. When do you have a ha when do you want the finance the other money articles, the non articles are not operating budget, but the individual money articles. Uh, Tom Hodges, is there a, because the town even pushed back. Do we have to meet like uh, in April and discuss it? <coughs> um, well, I, I think there's. Uh, three or four more that could be um, pretty easily dispensed with okay. without, you know, a deep discussion. Okay. So you'll, so you think you might have an idea what those might be between now and uh, next Monday evening? Oh yeah, sure. Oh, good. Well, so uh, and it's a revised it, money or, uh, uh, you know, uh, send a revised write up for the water. Bas yeah, basically not. six through 10 on the version you're going to get. Okay. All right. Actually, five through ten. Okay, on the March twenty first is the March twenty second version. Okay, all right, good. Well, thank you. And then uh, maybe next Monday evening, select finance committee members, we can pick a time to meet and discuss the uh, 
the app, the non, the non-operating budget articles, the uh, more, our money item articles, articles, and to have them uh, hash through them. And maybe for the highway, for the road paving, uh, Tom uh, Hutchinson, if you can have uh, maybe weigh in with Jan Warner and ask if she uh, has some thoughts on how she wants to uh, piece that, because we have like 988,000 that we owe right now through the state house uh, note sale program, you know, for the highway garage. And uh, so if she wants to, uh, what her thoughts are in terms of uh, recasting debt or putting it all together, I don't know. It might help because it has to be an, an item and it's going to be a line item in the money in the, uh, it'll be discussed at town meeting, put it that way. Even if it isn't a line item in the individual operating budget. It was interesting. I think it might be the first time I've seen a money article about paving the road. You're exactly right. Yeah, it is. That's the Capital Improvements Planning Committee recommendation because we've never had anything recommended by them before. So it's something new. It'll be uh, it'll be up for discussion at town meeting, but uh, you know we'll cross the bridge when we get to it. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I mean anything else to discuss jointly? Are we? Are so we I think that's show? it. Wait. So so I want to clarify. So we're. We're going to be meeting with the select board next week. That's correct. Next Monday at six thirty. Okay, to continue more of this, basically. <laughs> a Zoom, and, Zoom invitation shortly forthcoming, Roy. And I'll, of course, I'll forward along to you if uh, we don't you don't get it directly. Okay. So at some point, well, no. If we're voting, and we, you know, it's. I mean, in the past, obviously, we've vote. We've met on our own, and you know, discuss things and voted and then got back and, you know, but it's, if you, we can get it all done, meeting with the select board at the same meeting, it's, uh, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Well, we're discussing the operating budget. I mean, we haven't gotten into the money or I don't think that's on the agenda for next Monday evening. Yeah. But there's not that, you know, I, it doesn't look like it's that as convoluted as it usually is. Yeah. If well, you there's a few items. It should be a shorter town meeting this year, unless, uh, Somebody gets a hankering for the shelving system, then uh, we might meet. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. These bylaws are going to take, the bylaw stuff is going to take hours. All right. Yeah, yeah convoluted. It's, it's like 30 friggin' articles. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the money, one, the money ones are not that. Yeah. You know. Oh, so we all done? We're I done. Think so. I think we're excused from, from the all dinner right. table. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank Enjoy you, Alan. Time. Send some warm weather up there for us, Steve. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Alan. Big travel. Take care. Yeah. Good, good night, everybody. Okay. So we're not done. Just they're done. <laughs> they're oh, done. Yeah. Okay, yeah so don't hang up. Finance committee's done. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. We're close. So, Tom, do you have any items not anticipated? Uh, no, I do not. Anybody? No. Good. Do you have an update? Uh, yeah, a little bit of one. Um, I am uh, very happy to report that the Federal Emergency Management Agency has finally obligated funds for the Delabar Avenue String Stream Bank Stabilization Project. Engineering work started on this project in 2016. Hmm. FEMA is providing $262,000, right. uh, 75 percent of the cost of the project, um, to Conway's 25 percent match of $87,000, uh, which will be provided in in-kind labor and equipment for a total of a $350,000 project. Fantastic. So that is just excellent news. Yeah. Uh, it's been a long time, a lot of work um, to make it to make it happen. And hopefully, it'll be now. We actually have to do it. Our avenue in the bank. Yeah. Uh, the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs has developed a process for the State Reclamation and Mosquito Control Board to permit municipalities to opt out of mosquito control spraying, including aerial or other, conducted by that board. Towns must secure approval to opt out via a certified vote uh, by the select board and to submit an alternative mosquito management plan. 
all plans are subject to approval by the uh, Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. Get us more. Uh, and did you get us more information on like the opt out process and what uh, what an alternative would look like and. Or, or what the other towns are going to do, you, you know. Well, this is brand spanking new news. So, yeah, yeah. 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 We'll, we'll 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 be getting more information. No question about it. Um, and finally, if an uh, eventual permanent town administrator needs to over overlap with an interim for the month of July. We should have a town meeting warrant article for the interim TA pay, which would be about $6,250 for for one month. Uh, Just just a a heads up about that. Chew on that, and uh, we can take that up later. And that's all I have. No, select board member comments and concerns. Uh, was approached by by a, uh, a longtime watcher of our select board meetings, asking why they have to be so long. Can't we have more meetings that are less that that aren't as long? We try. Yeah. Yeah. I say it's budget season. They're always like this, aren't they? Yeah. Well, and, and you know, I think it's really helpful for the finance committee to meet jointly with us, and you know, they that. Go on forever. <laughs> well, for that reason, it might be helpful for them to meet without us. Yeah, I, here I am pushing for it. Maybe it's not a good idea. Well, no, when, when we met in person, it was so easy to do. They would pop into the meeting room, then they would go out back, and then they, you know, whatever, and then they'd come back. And, you know, yeah. now that, that that's the sort of the digital world doesn't favor this sort of efficiency. Yeah. And any other select board member concerns? How about mail, Tom? Tom, is there any mail? Sorry, I was muted here. Uh, no, no mail. Okay. Any announcements? Uh, did, did receive um, numerous com- uh, comments from uh, parents, staff, and administrators uh, thanking the select board for the work that they did financing the playground. So the town. Yeah, they really need it. Any announcements? So our next meeting next week, six o'clock, the 29th. That'll be the end date for getting applications. Um, so I, I am hoping I, we can think I think about. technically our next meeting is Wednesday. Um. Yeah, oh, we're, we're meeting with Natalie, Blay, yeah. and yeah. perhaps a, Adam. You're right. That's a posted meeting. Yep. Yeah. One or three. Great. Yeah. Okay. Wednesday. So Wednesday yeah. then. Wednesday. Okay, see you then. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We made it almost two Thank hours. You. I was hoping it'd be less than an hour and a half, but we, we're getting there. Good night. All Good right, night. thanks.